Okay, so unfortunately the recording of me building this fails. I'm not sure what happened, but I thought I'd make a video going through how it works, how it flows. Anyway, um, I'm sure there's a much more elegant way to achieve a 16 bar sequencer, but this is my way and I had a lot of fun learning about the connection mods and using the amps in interesting ways. Um, I'm going to go through it from the clock source and just show you the flow and how it works. So we have our clock here which is feeding into a splitter. The splitter is sending the clock to three of these sequences. These two sequences here are the ones that are generating the note values. So these are the ones that are generating values. These two are utility sequences. So you'll see that the splitter goes into the clock here and then only the first trigger is enabled. So every time this cycles it sends one trigger and that trigger is coming into the clock source of this sequencer which is moving it ahead one step. So that kind of gives us a max value, min value. Max value, it's almost like a square wave LFO or something like that. The reason I have this is because I can use this using these connection mods, which we'll get into in a sec, to trigger two different amps um, that kind of open and close, they go backwards and forwards, they do the difference of each other. So the value of this is coming out, uh, there's no point in the splitter, so ignore this. Uh, it's going into a subtract and then I have a knob set to one and that's because this amp was going from halfway to the max value. I'm not sure what the actual values are but it was going from 50% to 100%. I needed it to go from 0 to 50 and by adding, uh, by subtracting one from the equation that seemed to work so that subtract goes into another splitter and that goes straight into the input of the amp. This splitter here also splits it to an inverter and then we have another subtract and another one and that's going into this amp and that creates a opposite signal. Well not com actually opposite but it, it creates an opposite and then shifts it down one again. So that's why we get this alternating 0 to 50% on each amp. Now the reason I do this is each one of these uh, sequences that are generating values, we'll call them value sequences, they are connected to an amp themselves and what I wanted to do was when uh, one of these was open, one would play. When the other one was open, the other one would play. And this is how it works. So the output of the amp comes down um, and it goes into an, a splitter here. Just uh, I'll get to the splitter in a minute. But basically it goes from the output into the CV in. When I turn the CV in up to its max and feed the value out of the sequencer into an inverter and then into the input, um, what happens is it basically multiplies the signal so when this is down it's uh, letting that signal through, uh, it's not letting that signal through, when this is up it is letting that signal through. And we've got a complete duplicate here but it's doing the opposite based on this amp here so this has got the whole same configuration. So you'll see that uh, as these things tick backwards and forwards that this uh, display on the amp is moving and then stopping, moving, stopping and the same on this one. So they're basically just alternating and coming out and you'll see that the output of here and here is going into a splitter, uh, sorry, a add to and then that's going into a note, into the OSC, into the filter which has an envelope and so on. The trigger values also work um, as a 16 step thing. So again we have the outputs of these going into their own amps as well. So um, even though these are these are not currently displaying the right things. I mean, this should be over here, etc. Uh, these are actually working. Let me just prove it for you. There you go. So these are coming in as well, and um, the splitter before it goes into the CVN of the value amp is also going into the trigger amp as well. So that's just creating a duplicate system. So we've got one for the one for the value, one for the trigger, and then one for the value and one for the trigger on each one. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, using this, using this, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to get 32 steps. Um, it'd be a lot of these fellas here. Um, it, it would be really great to have um, something where I can see the value and maybe some logic stuff, um, X or and NANDs, things like that. Um, with those basic, with a bunch of additions to these things, um, we can build our own stuff 
while uh, the new things are being built. I think that would be a really, really helpful addition to get some craziness out of the, uh, the set of modules that are currently already there. So yeah, there we go. That is a my version of a 16-step sequencer in Synth VR.